What is up, Down and Sideways, you fantastic individuals? It is Lee God Black Eric and Mark here with you. Beauties for the big Bonanza preview. Day one of Swiss stage action at Worlds. Eight games on the docket in what is sure to be an absolute marathon of a day. Probably going to go through two entire uh, caster groups. You could honestly even do three. There's so many games. Eight games. Buckle up, folks. You got to have all the snacks, all your drinks. Be ready. Get your blankie. Get comfortable because you're going to be here a while watching all of these games, all these teams, all these regions combined for the Swiss stage. Yes, we have made it to the big dance, the big times of world's Swiss stage. Get ready. And obviously across the board, all these matchups are compelling. That's the beauty of this new Worlds format. But uh, let's just tee it up with the opener. Game one on the day, of course, is a mismatch because it's pool one, pool four. BLG versus MDK. Obviously, the Mad Lions looked, I think, a lot better than people were expecting in the playing stage. Did they level up enough to actually contest the top seed from the LPL? Probably not. Because that's, that's quite a bit you gotta gain. Gotta be honest with yourselves. When you look at this type of matchup, this type of mismatch, when you're talking about the Titan that is a number one seed from the LPL and BLG, and the number four play-in seed coming through. Uh, sorry, number three, excuse me, play-in seed in that pool four for the LEC Mad Lions Court. The question is gonna be for me, not about who wins this one. How does things play out? What is the angle? How do you get the upset? I think this one is sealed, done and dusted, locked in already that BLG win. The question for me is going to be, how do you rebound from this? How do you reset from this loss if you're the Mad Lions? Can you make it close enough that it's not necessarily as painful or as embarrassing as BLG can make a loss be against them on the big stage? That's going to be the big one for me. It's going to be able to find that reset because, again, this it's not all done and dusted after this one type of matchup. You've got extra lives. You've got extra opportunities that are going to be different after this one. You drew the short straw out of everybody getting this type of matchup. And listen, it's best of one. Anything can happen. Mad Lions have played more recently. Maybe you can talk about them having the momentum. But as good as they looked, I'm still looking at that mid lane. And Frescawi was better than advertising plans. But this is Knight, man. You're matching up against Knight in peak form from playoffs. Yes, that is going to be an extremely scary option for the side of BLG and what he's going to be able to do. Uh, what we saw in play-ins as far as what is that beginning champion pool, beginning establishing meta for the tournament for this for this patch, and how you can take that as a mid laner and what type of options are available. That is a scary one. Hand over to the likes of Knight. I think one of the ones that you got to be looking for and can't let him get the Syndra. The Syndra, you will not be getting a win if you let that one over to him and the type of power that he can have on that champion i think the other thing that you have to have to be counting on and hoping for if you are the mad lions if you want to have any chance of making me look bad with saying that this one is done already is the bottom lane is super and alvaro they have to find a way to step up find a way to contribute whether that's going to be in that 2v2 or it's going to be in a situation where you're having alvaro set up engages around some of these objectives that has to come through and continue Obviously, the task on the other hand and what is going to be facing you and preventing you from doing that elk and on, that is a scary, as scary as it gets really in the LPL. From maybe one of the biggest mismatches, next game on the docket is probably the closest one on paper because T1 versus TES, I'm not even sure which way you would call this an upset, whatever squad's winning. Obviously got the added caveat of this being the rematch of the EWC Finals. I think the biggest thing from this matchup is are we getting the on paper versions or are we getting the on rip that we have seen the last couple of weeks? And when I mean that, you're looking on paper, as you said, this is about as even as it gets. This is a match of two Titans that we are going to have throughout this Swiss stage, a very important one to get that first win to try and position yourself to get out of this group. That's what we're looking at. And you see both of these teams, top esports, T1, they bring that firepower. That firepower has been missing from the on rift versions of these teams at times. You've seen top esports kind of flounder a bit through the LPL playoffs, unfortunately. Again, because of that, not many opportunities 
to see them in that type of event before that spot is ultimately locked up for them based on their performance throughout the year. And then T1 waits till the very last game of the LCK to lock down that final play, uh, this final world spot for them. The question is going to be, have either of them leveled up since the last time we saw them get a better handle on the meta, have been refreshed, whatever, into this head-to-head -head type of showdown? Yeah, I mean, they've both been at the top or second in their region for the majority of the year, but definitely both uh, feeling a little bit of the slump towards the end of the regular season. This is as close as a 50-50 uh, gets in terms of these day one matchups, because immediately when you go into the third match, Weibo drawing a pool two team and saying, Gen G, that's a pool two matchup. And I know, again, best of ones, anything can happen. Weibo could absolutely come away with the upset. But when you look at all the strengths across the board that they have, Gen G has them too, and they're just better. You know, carry jungler Tarzan. Yeah, well, we got Canyon. Light having individual plays to seal a game. Yeah, well, we got Pays who's popping off. It's just advantage Gen G everywhere. Man, you'd be having the Mad Lions feeling bad about themselves getting the BLG matchup. You got Weibo going, you got nothing. You're a pool four. We got drawn into this matchup against Gen G. Yes, very, very scary to find them as this pool two uh, seed. And one of the things that's going to be interesting, of course, is does this lessen some of the expectations, some of that pressure on this team? We know that that has been a factor as much as you want to talk about it or even avoid it if you're a fan, whatever it is. It's been there for Gen G, and this has been the only year that they have been able to surmount and surpass it to claim one of these titles, one of these championships on the international stage. Is that the, the monkey off the back? Are they able to continue and accelerate even further on this international stage the way that they have done so domestically? Starts in this matchup, and this is going to be that interesting one because I think one of the things that Weibo and that people are not expecting and that always seems to come through is that bottom lane is Mr. Light down there and the damage and the control that he can have. I think he is certainly going to be an option in this series if he gets on to one of these hyper carry jinx like champions that we have seen emerge to the play in stage. That's the angle that I'm looking for for Weibo as well as Shahu in the mid lane is going to be a key and important part of what goes right in this matchup. Is anything going to go right in this matchup is going to be what is dictated by Canyon in the jungle for Gen G because he is going to he's going to be the one that dishes out the pass because if he's feeling his game, he's feeling the rest of the squad is in a good spot. There's no way you're wrestling this one away from Gen G. Very curious what the jungle and bot lane metas in particular look like as these LCK and LPL teams start hopping on to the rift. Uh, the ultimate hopium matchup for eu is absolutely fanatic versus d plus because you feel like if fanatic level up to some of their best forms in summer absolutely they have a chance i know they're the higher pool seed in this matchup but another one that's somewhat even on paper it's just a matter of probably how is lucid as a rookie on the international stage and if fanatic has shored up some of their uh, many issues from summer playoffs I'm looking at those many issues from summer playoffs, and that is what I want to see uh, changed up and obviously have some type of uh, solution to if you are fanatic and what you're looking at on the other side, the rift in D plus Kia. Lucid is going to be that question mark. How prepared is he? What type of nerves are there? If there are any type of situation in this one, he has been very good to phenomenal throughout the LCK split uh, that he's gone through and being that rookie of the split that we have seen and developed up through the question is going to be on him and what that performance is because he is a big part of whether things go right for d plus kia right beside him mid jungle synergy is going to be mr showmaker the eu monster himself he's here he's talked to solo q he says i won't be seeing you guys i got champions q it's a little bit different but uh you know if everything goes anything goes wonky there i'll come down and I'll visit you and you can steal my CS. You can grief me all you want, all these type of things. So he's ready. He's in the environment. The champions that we do talk about with someone like Knight, again, someone like Showmaker, a very scary option and one that has terrorized LCS, LC, uh, LEC teams in the past. Going to be scared of that one. The question for me, those problems from playoffs for Fnatic, part of that includes that bottom lane duo and, and Oscar in the top side. 
need them to be stable in this matchup if you have any type of chance because you need to provide that avenue for someone like Razork to get something going in the jungle. I think he can be that difference maker. His experience and performance compared to someone like Lucid on the other side, that's got to be something you find and, and exploit if you're Fnatic. And I, I will say the meta going back to mages in the mid lane, Humanoid is at the very forefront of guys that will benefit from that. He's looked much better on those throughout his career than when these ADs were meta. I think uh, that's going to be maybe the banger of the day, but it's D-plus coming away. The, the NA version of this is if you're swaying on the opium side is the team liquid versus lng matchup obviously we've had this saga of is scout starting is scout not starting now it looks very much like things got sorted out and he will be starting which unfortunately is a terrifying prospect for apa and the boys oh it was looking so good it was gonna be so perfect if it was Yagao on the other side, and that's perfect with uh, a little asterisk because anything can happen if it's the LCS uh, situation. But yes, that was the prime matchup that you were looking for. That one would have even the playing field, maybe opened things up for an advantage for Team Liquid. Now you're met with Scout and that is shut down immediately. This is an LNG team that I want to bring up and mention that we have seen some abysmal gameplay from to start out the year but they have found a way to rebound reclimb up the lpl ladder and get themselves into this type of position they cannot be underestimated that is important to take away from that type of climb in that hole that they put themselves in can't forget that they did put themselves in that hole with that type of performance so that is capable that is a pitfall that they can uh, fall into that type of level of ineptness out on the rift and that's where Team Liquid needs to capitalize. We need to see it. You're looking at APA, of course, in the mid lane is a big part of it. He has been the huge leader and step forward in his career. Impact has as well had probably his best career since coming, best career year since coming over from the LCK. And he's already had good years for the LCS. That is going to be an important one heading into this one against LNG. LNG and D plus probably at comparable power levels coming into this, but I still think Team Liquid much higher, much more confident in them than Fnatic. So I like Team Liquid more in the LNG matchup than Fnatic against D+. Then we get to these kind of trio of what should be more one-sided matchups because you have these pool four seeds. PSG versus Hanwha Life for another incredible uh, power spike level up. And as long as Gen G is not on Skarner. I feel better about PSG's chances. <laughs> I, I, I think Jungia feels better about PSG's chances <laughs> if he's not on the Skyrim of those performances. Not what you want to be taking into the Swiss stage. But we have this matchup, and yes, this is a mismatch completely when you are looking at this one. Assuming it is still the Hanwha life that we got from the LCK playoffs. The Hanwha life that was able to level up throughout this year, move from just being a good team, a team that, oh, hey, you're doing pretty good, to a team that's doing great, to a team that has just de dethroned Gen G as the LCK champions. That is the question on which one of those additions, which one of those variations among the scale are we gonna get from this climbing Hanwha life team? And on the other side, you're looking at PSG. And are you saying, is there any, any magic left in the magical career that Maple has had 11 years? The Flash Wolf LCK killer. Does he got another one in the tank? And obviously it's a long way up for them. I wouldn't be surprised if they go in one because I feel like Hanwha is still very much going to be riding that LCK momentum. Uh, FlyQuest versus Gam. Listen, this is always a terrifying prospect for the LCS, especially after how we felt after the play-in stage at 100 Thieves. But this is an opportunity for FlyQuest to ease in to the World Championship because this is one of the best draws they could have hoped for in this first round. And it's an opportunity for Masu and Busio. The Gam bot lane is probably the weakest point for them. So this is an opportunity for FlyQuest to make a statement that they should actually be a legit threat at this tournament. Yes, and that is where the challenge needs to be laid down. This is it for the LCS fans. FlyQuest versus Gam. You've seen Kiaya and Levi do some things in the play-in stage that make you a little bit scared, remind you of a couple of old LCS whoopsies in the past, and you don't got to look too far when you're talking about a team like FlyQuest and looking for those LCS whoopsies on an international stage. Is this redemption for this team? Of course, you've got 
Whippo and Inspired in the top side, the two biggest things that we always talk about and look at with this Black Quest team, they have to be contributing and finding ways to get involved in this game for things to go right for Black Quest. And you laid it out. That challenge in the bottom lane. Masu and Busio need to find a way to step up and be that edge, be an advantage over Gam and what you're going to see there. That is the challenge. That is the issue. If that comes through, hey, we're off to the races. That's one on the board for the LCS right there. If it doesn't, we're in a bad world all over again, and we're talking again from square zero. Yeah, and that's after 100 Thieves not being able to get through, the top seed immediately losing to a play in Sage. It's already going to be all hands on deck, alarm blaring for the LCS. We wrap things up with G2 and Pain on the day so that they could keep the 200 audience members around for the day. And obviously G2, massive favorites here, should get it done. But there's no way this isn't a fiesta with the CB lol and G2 on the riff. I'm, I'm calling it. This might be the most kills throughout the day. This matchup right here, <laughs> G2 Pain. Uh, and there, there's something about it, even if, if this one's still, again, on paper, everything you're looking, the expectations leads you overwhelmingly on the side of G2. You know that G2, it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, the Fong Wu, Buffalo, if it's going to be Pain Gaming, whoever it's going to be, there's going to be something interesting happening with one of these play-in type of team situations. There will be some brawls happening all across Summoner's Rift. The question, is G2 going to be a better than that? Are they going to be above that this time around? Cap's talking about getting inspired from Faker winning his title last year and that, you know, whole journey that he went through from being that triumphant champion and then the failures and then getting right back up to that top of the championship mountain. Looking for Caps to have a big performance on home soil. I think that would be a big one for G2. Realistically, though, day one, the West should at least be picking up two wins. And if you're swaying, again, a little further to that Hopium side, you're thinking either TL or Fnatic pick up a win. And you should be sitting at three and two, maybe as a not unrealistic at all scenario for the West. Your, that's your your best foot forward for the West is grabbing that two, grabbing that third win potentially on the day to set yourself forward into that better positioning. Again, unfamiliar territory if we do get that best foot forward on this first day and set us up into those 1-0 type matches in this stage would be uh, something very different than what we would have expected <laughs> for any of these ones. You have to be going for this one. I think the way that the matches have lined up and what you have with these teams from the LCS, from the LEC, this is what you could have hoped for as far as the way that it goes. And, uh, you know, you don't have any, oh, you can't match up LCS, LCS, or LEC, LEC at this point. This was as best as we could get at these situations. Maybe the only better one is if Yaga was playing for LNG. That would be the absolute cherry on top here. Got to find a way to take advantage if you are these Western teams. So then we got to jump ahead a little past day one, head into preview quarterfinals. Who is making top eight? We'll save the easy ones. BLG, Hanwha, Genji, those three are going to get through. No problem at some point, whatever capacity it is. So the next question is, how many Western teams do we think can crack the top eight and bump out an LCK or LPL team? There's a maximum of two. Maximum of two. There, we we can't yep. go any higher. Two is actually pretty darn crazy. Yeah, better than years two. past, probably. I'm gonna settle on one. Is the way I will safely take this one. I think that again, like last year, there's gonna be a proven situation where once you get down to kind of that three four zone for LPL LCK, it can't be a guarantee. It absolutely can be an expectation that they will be better than these LCS LEC teams, but it cannot be that guarantee. There will be something wacky, wonky going on in there, throwing it up, leaving a spot available for one of these teams and one of the winner eventually of a usually matchup of LCS versus the LEC is going to be the one to claim it. So you got to step right up. Team Liquid, uh, Fnatic, FlyQuest, G2. Who's it going to be? Who's going to claim that one? Unfortunately, <coughs> Mad Lions Koi, I don't think you're quite in the running for that. Yeah, I mean, again, despite their impressive play and stage, yeah, I feel like the only avenue for West Hope, I'm saying G2, you know, as a squad that can make it, and then it's got to be either FlyQuest or Team Liquid, another LCS team stepping up. A lot of that depends on the draw, of course, but eventually you have to win a best of three to qualify. So if we're optimistic and somehow say two Western teams are getting through, then you go, okay, well, which LCK or LPL team 
are dropping the ball and not getting through. And to me, the ones that jump out are number one, Weibo. They've got Genji in the first matchup, probably going to 0-1. They've been incredibly inconsistent. They're the lowest seed coming in. And I know they had a good playoff run, but also went 0-6 in playoffs. So that seems like the easy LPL answer. LCK, T1's the fourth seed, but I'm never betting against T1, not making top eight. They've never uh, failed to do that. So maybe you're saying D-plus doesn't get it done? I, I, that's one of those possibilities. You're looking at that one. That's one where you think the inexperience for someone like Lucid does have a factor on this team aiming who has throughout this year had his most consistent year that we've ever seen as far as how good he has been able to be for this team you're counting on that not coming through at this event again all within the realm of possibility when you're looking at them you go on the other side you're thinking about top esports right is, you know is it yeah. this the failure once again that we have seen from an lpl seed and Weibo, we've seen LNP. tes do it before on the international stage We've, uh, we've seen it. Is Cream going to be able to step up and deliver the mid lane performances that we are expecting will be necessary given the meta that will be available for some of these incredibly talented and lethal mid laners that will be at the Swiss stage? That's what you're looking at. LNG, is there still confusion, disruption from the whole situation with Scout? Are they going to have this uh, brutal start to this tournament the way that they started out this year brutally at the beginning of it? All those type of questions. T1, again, yes, it's almost impossible to go against them type of situation. But if there ever was a year to say that they would fail, they would falter on the international stage, it's got to be this year with the struggles that we have seen throughout summer from Faker individually as well as other members of this team and kind of strange assessment of the meta for the team that was the meta breakers last year at the event. Lots of questions in that type of one on who is not making it out from the LPL and LCK. But BLG is really the only LPL team that I have 100% confidence in getting through, which means there's a sliver of light. The door's <laughs> open a little for the LCS and LEC to make a little bit of history. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, wonderful people. Next time we'll be chatting actual games of the main stage. Thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you on the flippity flip.